can you stand up under oath and identify this man as the bloke who introduced Terry Clark to Brian Alexander? That's Bob Trinoli. Hey, listen, you know that test that we did? You got cancer, mate. Full-blown cancer, I'm really sorry. You must have won big time, hey? I got my test results. I'm clear. Bobby, that's great. <laughs> He's our point of attack. He connects all the corruption, the cops, the narcs, the lawyers, and Clark. <laughs> it's nice to have mates, eh? Hey? Sure is. Oh, what's this, Annie? Bonus. I'm afraid I'm letting you go. You're giving us a bad name, bro. George Freeman. George Freeman, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Melanie. I want you out of here. <sighs> Sorry? You're into me for over 20 pews, yet you stand here, 715 bucket glass cognac. Get out. Maybe I should leave. No, no, please, stay. This is a misunderstanding. I'm here with my fiance, Brian. Let's not have a scene, hey? Mate, you know I'm good for it. Fuck the money. I got regulars here who don't like the kind of publicity that you've been pulling. Well, I was acquitted. Oh, fuck! You fuck, I deserve some respect, George. Respect? You're just a trumped-up, unemployed errand boy, Alexander. Oh, the things I know about you, Freeman. Murray Farquhar, the cops, a whole fucking lot of you. Yeah, I could take you all down. Uh, look, mate, you know... I'm, I'm, I'm under a lot of strain. I, I, I didn't mean that. I, I, you know, I, I, would, I would never talk, George. You know that I would... Fuck, mate. Fuck. Let go, you fucking prick. Get out. Sorry, sweetheart. Sure you order? Brian Alexander thought he could have it both ways. He liked being a respectable member of the law fraternity, but he also liked to mix it with hardened criminals. And having a foot in both camps meant he wasn't totally trusted by anybody. Aunty Bess was a nurse and she said you can get treatment for an enlarged prostate. In Aunty Bess's day, treatment meant slapping a leech on your bum. You're so rude about my family. The pills Paltos gave me are doing wonders. The painkillers are not going to make you any better, Bob. I feel better. Why would I see more doctors if I'm feeling better? What the hell are... Morning all. I don't suppose the bar's open, Bob. No, it isn't. I'm sorry. Sonia's locked me out of my house. And Sonia tear your clothes and smear shit all through your hair as well? I was in a scuffle. Who with? George Freeman. Fuck me. I've been getting shit from every direction in my life. 
Work? Wife? You name it. Now Freeman kicks me out of his new club for no fucking reason. Yeah, well, Freeman doesn't need a fucking reason. Can you talk to him, Bob? Please make people listen to you. George, George, hey, how you going, mate? Um, got a uh, quick chat. <sighs> Brian Alexander, he's uh, shitting himself. Wants to apologise about that business the other night. You can both go fuck yourselves. What if Trimboli and Clark were partners right from the start? We know he deals directly with Freeman, Alexander, painters and dockers in Melbourne, the Italians in Griffith. Trimboli's not the only well-connected villain on that board. But he does explain how a two-bit dope dealer like Clark could have hooked into a national distribution network within weeks of arriving in this country. You think we should actually summons Bob to appear at the Wilson inquest? Alison Dine said he is the link between Clark and Alexander. Let's do it. Robert Trimboli, John Eston, Brian Alexander. This, uh, Alexander bloke, he just got acquitted, didn't he? Of conspiracy to pervert justice, this summons relates to a separate matter. Mm. So Brian's been a busy boy, eh? You've heard of the Wilsons. Heroin couriers found murdered in Melbourne. Mm. In Melbourne. So, all due respect, Inspector, what's this got to do with us? I'm a Victorian police officer intending to serve summons on suspected criminals residing in Sydney, your jurisdiction. Yeah, well, I don't know how things are in Victoria, Inspector, but I've got a manpower shortage and mm. I can't spare anyone. Let me get this clear. You're refusing to provide assistance to a fellow officer. This is a matter of basic police protocol. Well, look, maybe if you come back next week... Uh, there you go. Yeah. Next week? You can have Jimbo drive you around all day. Twenty-five years I've been a police officer, I have never, ever experienced the like of it. Welcome to sunny Sydney. Hmm. Best thing out of Sydney's the road to Melbourne, Dave. Ignite, Brian. <sighs> Fuck off. You Brian William Alexander? You know who I am. Are you Brian William Alexander, yes or no? Yes. Leave the window open next time you keep in the car. Fumes in there could kill a horse. Clutter on his pump and veins. Push the grip and stay the highway. Push the clutch. Ground the gear. Ground like a demon. Never no fear. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I'm going to be too um, Gonna have to call you back. Jesus, Inspector. Haven't you got anyone else to pick on? Plenty. I just have more fun picking on you. Are you Robert Trimboli? No. I'm Rock Hudson, officer. In town for the Mardi Gras. I'll see you at the inquest. Rock. They've got nothing, all right? Nothing! We've got to do something about that dying bitch. Shut her up. Wait, I don't want to hear this. 
Why don't you go around and breathe on her, Brian? That'll finish her off. This is your responsibility, Bob. I said I don't want to hear this. Look it up to both of you. It's just an inquest. Into a double murder. Yeah, it's being held in Victoria. I don't give a shit where it is. The same rules apply as up here. Never name names, never tell tales, and everything else will look after itself. Bob. Bob, wait waiter. Look, you know, you know I'll do the right thing, right? Yeah, my ass, you will. I went to see Freeman. Asked for a chat. Just like you wanted. Yeah. What did he say? Well, it turns out you threatened him. Said you'd talk. No, no, no. I didn't actually do that. Well, whatever you fucking said, he got the message. Now, you're going to have a shower. You're going to put on a clean suit. And you're going to front that coronet in Melbourne and say absolutely nothing. And then we'll worry about hosing Freeman down. All right? Like good law-abiding citizens, Bob, Brian and John obeyed their summons and appeared at the inquest. And saying absolutely nothing proved far easier for Bob and Brian than any of them had imagined. Calling Robert Trimboli. Mr Trimboli is present, Your Worship. However, my client claims the privilege against self-incrimination. Brian William Alexander. Mr. Alexander is present, Your Worship. However, he also claims the privilege against self-incrimination. John Aston. The only drawback with claiming privilege is that some people may think you have something to hide. Is John Lawrence Aston present? And for a lawyer who needs a reputation as a man of good character, that wasn't an option. Do you swear by Almighty God that the evidence you will give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God. For the record, my name is Detective Inspector Joe Messina, and the coroner has asked me to assist with this inquiry. Mr. Aston, I'd like to ask you some questions concerning Terence John Clark. You said in a previous statement you've never met Mr. Clark. To the best of my knowledge, no. He is, in fact, a client of yours, is he not? <laughs> no. We've tabled evidence that shows your practice is nothing more or less than a clearinghouse for Mr. Clark's drug money, while facilitating payments made to corrupt police officers and public officials, all on behalf of Mr. Clark. And you're saying you know nothing of this? I've told you I haven't even met Mr. Clark. Hmm. Your Worship, I'm tabling Mr. Aston's appointment book, which, when seized by police, had a page torn out. A forensic testing of the backing page shows the missing page detailed a scheduled appointment between Mr. John Aston and A. Terry Clark. No, no, wait, I, I, I didn't say that. I said I didn't remember meeting uh, Mr. Clark. I, I may have met him. I meet with lots of people. I put it to you, Mr. Aston, that just after your meeting with Mr. Clark, your firm transferred some funds, an amount of $264,000, which went into an account held by Mr. Clark. I have the paperwork right here. While John Aston's evasiveness cast a huge shadow over the relationship between his office and the syndicate, the ultimate success of the Wilson inquest hinged on Alison Dine. If she could hold her nerve, Brian Alexander and Bob Trimboli would still be in the firing line. Don't be scared of them. You're not one of them. You're standing up and you're telling the truth. That's a good thing. A rare thing. Terry Clark's long-term lover, is that correct? Yes, it is. You worked for him? Carried out heroin importations? Helped process the heroin? That's right. Mr. Clark also discussed several murders with you, gruesome murders. 
And yet you never turned him in. In fact, through most of it, you stayed loyal to him. Yes, I did. Given that history, how do you expect anyone to believe your testimony? I wouldn't blame them if they didn't. I don't think there's any way I can ever work off what I've done. But I guess maybe if I've got any value, any value left at all, it's that I can get up here and tell the truth about what happened, help the truth to get out. So I have to try. For the next two days, Alice and Dine went to town. And this time, the coroner described her as a very credible witness. He found that the Wilsons had been murdered on the orders of Terry Clark and recommended a royal commission into the whole Mr Asia syndicate. And in this country, no one can hide from a royal commission. Baz has sent you some sangers. Seems there was a spare one lying about. Thanks, mate. Trevor, you've been hearing about this uh, joint police group? Yeah, a bunch of feds and Victorians sticking their noses into our patch. <laughs> well, we thought you might like to put yourself forward. Sorry, Dennis? Look, we keep a lid on things in this city, not the fucking feds, all right? You've seen enough to know that. And ain't always by the bull, but it works. Mm -hmm. See, it looks like they're tapping some phones. And God knows what else. Nosy bastards are breathing down our neck. It just makes it harder for us to do our job. Yeah, I can see all that. So Jim and I, we've been having a chat, and we thought you might like to help us out here. Yeah, yeah, sure. Young bloke like you, I mean, it's just the sort of guy they're looking for, eh? They get a talented police officer. And we'd rest easy knowing that someone's sensible is keeping an eye on what they're doing. Good boy. Danny? Bob, how are you, mate? Listen, we need to have a word about your latest invoice. Yeah, well, Paltos needs to understand that my drivers will be taking this shit through three different states. Well, our costs are blowing out everywhere, mate. So it's got to be payable on delivery, not now, OK? How long's that going to be, Bob? Well, an import of this size takes a while to organise, Danny. It's got to be harvested, packed up, and then we've got to buy a ship to get it out to Darwin. This part of a year, probably. Coroner has recommended a Royal Commission be convened into the Mr. Asia Drug Syndicate. You understand what that means? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm being persecuted. You can't say no to a Royal Commission, Brian. You refuse to testify, you're being contempt. That means jail. A lot of blokes inside aren't big fans of lawyers. A lot of blokes inside aren't big fans of you. Fuck off. <sighs> Just fuck off, OK? Sounds like you need a stiff drink. I think he's already had a few of those. What do you think will happen to me if I do testify? What do you think will happen to you if you don't? You cooperate with us, we can protect you. Well, you want an answer from me? Well, I've already given you one. Fuck off! Inspectors! Oh, it's great to be on board. Hey, Trev, you know, you know mobs, don't you? Oh, uh, yeah, we met once or twice when I first went upstairs. Oh, yeah. Trez just um, got the nod. He starts with us on Monday. Uh, how do your old mates at CIB feel about you working with the feds? Oh, at the end of the day, we're all on the same side. You say that like you believe it. <laughs> I wouldn't be in the job if I didn't. Well, we do try to put the rivalries aside here. It's one of the appeals of the unit. Cheers. 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 That and the slick cars. Mm. Anyway, I reckon that's why I joined the force. You know, the brotherhood. One big blue family, huh? Yeah, you know what they say about family. Can't choose them, but you're stuck with them for life.
Trimboli knew about the Wilson murders, he discussed it with Alison Dine. That's enough to charge him as an accessory. We do that, we lose the wiretaps. The taps are only there to gather intelligence. The intelligence is there so that you can make an arrest. One arrest. But from what we're getting on the tapes, could lead to dozens. You were the one that said we should focus on Trimboli. Why the hell don't you want to finish the job? We've been listening to his phones for two weeks, and already we found out about a major importation. Drugs, yes. I'm talking about homicides. They're one and the same. These homicides are a product of the drug trade. I want Trimboli for the lot. He's a flight risk, Warwick. Exactly. We need to get him in front of the Royal Commission. He'll never talk. If Bob's on remand, it ups the pressure on Alexander. And as you said, we all know that jellyfish is one nudge away from blowing the entire rotten state apart. The level of chatter about the importation is building. Let's give the tap a couple more days, find out how much they're moving and where it's coming from, then we'll grab Trimboli. Cheers, Dubai. Cheers. Looking edgy, Trevor. They're bugging phones, a lot more of them than we thought. Yank technology. The nearest phone's behind that bar, mate. I, I don't reckon they can hear us from here. So spit it out, mate. They're going to move on that Trimboli bloke. Move how? They'll ping him as an accessory. Anything else they can cook up just so they can hold him? When? Early next week, maybe sooner. Good lad. Good lad. If they're right, and it is spreading, what'll they do? Well, prostate cancer like yours is driven by testosterone. The preferred way of arresting a spread is orchidectomy. Orchid fucking what? It's surgical removal of the testes. You want to cut my balls off? It's likely that's what they're going to recommend. Fucking Jesus. You want to call Anne-Marie? No, she doesn't know I'm here. I knew a bloke. They told him he had six months. Decided to go out with a bang. Sold up everything he owned, left his wife and went travelling in the West Indies. Six months later, he was feeling better than ever, so he called his quack, uh, no offence, and the quack admits they'd fucked the tests up. Wasn't a thing wrong with him. Apart from the fact that he was broke, stuck in Guyana, and his wife wasn't returning his calls. Sometimes we make mistakes. Could call it a mistake. On the other hand, he had a bloody good six months. <laughs> drinking my booze, so you can all shut up and let me talk. <laughs> now, some of you might have wondered why I'm throwing a party, particularly given the uh, negative reportage that's been written in the papers about me recently. That's all lies, officer. Yeah, yeah, well, it is a bunch of bloody lies. And that's why I'm chucking a party. To stick a finger up at them. <laughs> they keep coming at me. Cooking up new outrages that Bob Trimboli supposedly committed. But they can't make any of it stick. I'm untouchable, unchargeable, and I'm here to stay! Just don't mention the word orchid to me ever again, and you and me will be all right. <laughs> Drinking champagne. Oh, you're always telling me I'm in a rut, so here I am. Rut free. Bob, is there something you're not telling me? Here. Yeah. There is something I need to tell you. You are the most beautiful girl in the room. <laughs> Come on, dance with me. <laughs>
you've got a job on, Bob. I, I, I thought maybe I could get onto it too. Sorry, mate. It's all been quiet ever since that shit with Terry went over. What? I'm looking at a fucking bottle shop job. Five dollars an hour. That cash in hand? How often have I helped you, Bob? And every time I paid top dollar for the privilege. Anyhow, I already said, it's quiet. You're a lying wog. I know you got something cooking with Paltos. You get out of here. Come on, out! Um, I'm sorry, Bob. I, I didn't mean that. I... How many times are you going to use that excuse? My wife has taken my kids to Canberra. I owe George Freeman 20 grand. And now this Royal Commission business. I wish I could kill myself. I'm a bloody Catholic. Watch what you wish for. There are a few blokes who'd be happy to make that one come true. Yeah, I just need to work, mate. I just need to earn. You want to eat? On the house. Anything you want. But when you leave, you don't come back here. Ever. George, I need to speak to you, Freeman. Calm down. George, after all, I've done to you, George. Let's go. Come on, mate. Out we go. Let's speak to Freeman. Fair enough. So they're closing in again, are they? What do you heard? We heard the feds are going to make a move. Trimboli's gone. Same with Alexander. Surprised it took him so bloody long. Bob's a good fella. I mean, he has his limits, but if you give him fair warning, uh, he'll do the right thing. Alexander's another story. Oh, I think we can handle Brian. Mission. Bloody hell. They're pressing me, mate. I don't want to talk. I know things that could hurt a lot of people. But if they're not going to help me, then what the fuck am I supposed to do? And that's a hard one. Or is there something that can be done? Maybe Dennis could put the feelers out to this machine, a prick, and call him off. Ryan, Messina's got a rod so far up his ass you can see it when he yawns. There must be someone down in Victoria that wants to do some business. You got any money? Yeah, I could borrow some from my cousin. Maybe 20, 30. Okay. <clears throat> I'll have a little chat with Dennis. Just. No. See what he can turn up. Thank you, mate. Fucking dying here, I really am. Hello. Bob, it's me, Nick. Oh, G'day, mate. How'd you pull up? Listen, I got word from George. He reckons the heat's on you for that business down south. Oh, I, I knew they were sniffing around. More than sniffing. I can't say where he got this from, but it's reliable. They're going to move on you soon. We're talking about next week or...? Soon, mate. Very soon. All right. I'll get back to you and I've made some inquiries. Liz. 
Switch it to speaker. Hello. Mate, I've got some news. Don't tell me, Jim. The feds are on to me. You're not half bloody wrong. That's Jimmy again. How long do you reckon I've got? Well, from what I hear, they're overdue now. OK, thanks. Trimboli's just been tipped off. Phone's running hot out there. I've got to go. Leave the country. Right now? Well, you know how I've had money problems. Well, they're a lot worse than I let on. A lot worse. So to get away from some bad debts you're leaving me? No, love. I'd be more of a fool than I am to leave you. I just need to make myself scarce for a bit, that's all. Well, how long's a bit? Well, we'll see, eh? Oh. All you ever do is work. You ought to be glad to see the back of me. Well, if I'd known, I would have packed you some things. I mean, what about your script? Have you still got those pills left? They're just painkillers. You're right, love. I've got cancer. I know that before. <laughs> I want a pass alert on the names Robert Trimboli, Jones, anything else we know he I'm is. I'm onto it. Do you want me to ring Inspector Messina? It's my call to hold off. I'll tell him. With no time to make plans, Aussie Bob was stuck with having to travel on his own real passport. And he knew that unless he could think of a small, simple way of fooling the customs computer, he was snookered. Flying on an aeroplane. Pissed the other day, I didn't know if you meant business or not. Oh, well, you hope I did. How'd you go getting that money? I got a ten. Wait, you know, if that's not enough, maybe we should just forget the whole thing and... Uh... No, 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 no. We'll sort that out later. You, uh, you just stay where you are, we'll come and get you. I don't want to cause any trouble, you know? Mate, no trouble. Just have a beer, relax, and, uh, whatever you do, don't talk to anyone. Oh, 
Huh? All right? Yeah, all right. Sonny, it's me. Sonny? Why are you calling me? I just wanted to hear your voice. I asked you not to call. Yeah, I know, but... Uh, I'm all alone down here. Could you put the kids on, please? You're drunk. Oh, God. Sonny, please. I just want to hear their voices. I'm sorry. But it's better that I don't. Jesus Christ. It's so much to ask, isn't it? I've lost fucking everything. I just want to talk to my children. Mate has a very sophisticated bar. Stub his cans all long necks. So Jim told me about a little chat you had. Like of a thing, that Royal Commission, eh? Oh, yeah, but I'm not going to say anything, Dennis. I swear it. You know, they can lock me up. I don't give a shit. That's not what you told me. <sighs> I was pissed. Yeah, exactly. See, that's the fucking problem, Brian. You're a fucking piss pot. With a big mouth. Dennis, please, come on. Hey, hey. I thought we agreed. No guns. No look, blood on the deck. Let, yeah. me, let me go. Let me go. Look, look, look I've, I've got 10 grand here. You can have all that. It's yours. It's nothing personal, OK? <laughs> I don't like it. It's true. But that's not why I'm doing you. You're just a bloody liability. <laughs> look, Brian, just stand still, mate. You're making me seasick. God, all right, fuck it. Fuck it. Get it over with. No, 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 there's no shooting, mate. We're gonna have to fill out a report if we fire police, aren't we? No. What the fuck? No, 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 no. Do me clean, man. Shoot me. Shoot me. I won't struggle. I, I swear it. I won't. Fuck off. Fuck off. No. 
No! No! Be a man! Jesus Christ! No! Do this! Do this! Do this! I can't fucking do it! Jesus, hit him over the fucking head or something! I'm not returning this boat with blood on the deck! Fucking hold him still then! Jesus! I'm trying to squeeze this! Fuck! I'm trying to fuck! Okay, boys, chuck it over. Oh, you the spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, but we shall be. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, forever shall be. Fucking hell. Jeez. Funny, eh? I never thought he'd be so religious. <laughs> 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 Who wants a beer? <laughs> <laughs>